Hello, everyone. My name is Ned Dennis, and I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. We have the pleasure of having Wen from Taiwan with us. She's the first one from Taiwan uh, to, to accomplish some of the major channels. And she didn't just do it with a lack of style. She did the, uh, the entire Triple Crown uh, this summer in 30 some odd days. Uh, so welcome, Wen. Hello. <laughs> Um, when tell us about your early swimming. Uh, where did you learn? Who taught you? Um, I was in the school swimming team when I was in elementary school. So yeah, when I was little, for about three years, that's all. And then I stopped swimming because in Asian country, you know, people, uh, they don't, they don't like, they don't really do sports, and and yeah, so I just study. And then when I was in college, uh, I started open water swimming. I just fall in love with it. I really, really like to swim in the sea. I feel it's so, so different from the pool. <laughs> so help us understand. Um, I'm fortunate that I've been to Taiwan a few times. Um, you, you live in Taipei. How close is the sea? How do you get there? Is it a train? Is it a bus? Is it a car? You know, tell us how it works. Uh huh. Uh, it's not so far. It's about thirty minutes drive to to the sea. to the beach but um the environment is not so friendly to swimmer i mean the government because uh they think in our culture they think uh, open water swimming is just so dangerous so they don't they don't really like us to swim in the sea So are there, does the beach have a shark net and you swim on the other side of the shark net um <laughs> or how does it work? not really not really they just they just don't want you to drown yourself <laughs> And are the lifeguards blowing a whistle and yelling at you to get back or how, what is, And what, even what happens? even the police, even the police come here to to say, oh, you you can't get in. Yeah, that's too dangerous. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And what was your, what was your, you say you started in, in college. Was there a, a sort of an organized 1500K swim or were you just all alone out there swimming? How does it, how did it happen? Um, I'm a swimming coach, so uh, I I took my students. Oh, I coach adults, and then I I took my students from the pool to the sea to to coach them how to, um, at least how to survive in open water swimming. And yeah, now they can enjoy uh, open water swimming much more than before. And then I started to uh, I was in uh, maybe twenty twenty eighteen, I think. Yeah, I I joined a ten k. Uh, marathon swimming in Thailand. That's my first ten k swim, and I think I, I thought it was just so interesting, different from you know just swim in the at the beach. Yeah, really cool experience for me. Are there organized long distance swims in uh, Taiwan? Uh, races or or solo swims? Um, not really. I, I I can say not yet because I I'm trying to do some. <laughs> Okay, and um, how did you find out about the 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 swim in Thailand? Were you on social media? Um, how did you know? How, how did you get involved at that level? Um, I was trying to do some open water swimming in Taiwan, and then I thought, uh, uh, because we got some inshore island, so uh, actually we we got really good environment to practice, yeah, you know, like baby channels, <laughs> yeah, get across the baby channel, and then I realized that I really wanted to join um international race, so that's why I went to Thailand to join that marathon swimming. And at that point, were you already thinking about the English Channel, or was that coming Not much yet. later? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, yeah. When I was uh in after that that ten k, I was thinking about oh maybe I can do some, uh something like uh like the channel. I was thinking about it, but haven't planned about it. And yeah, when I was in maybe two years ago, uh, when I have I have done um uh, most of the inshore islands in Taiwan, yeah, there are uh three or four inshore islands uh, about ten k. And yeah, I really think, okay, maybe I can try another bigger one. And yeah, I really wanted to do uh, the English channel. And then I saw uh, Andy Donison uh, doing his Ocean 7. So uh, he inspired me a lot, you know. <laughs> Did you have any anybody to talk to? Did you have any mentors? Um, did anybody to guide you or are you just kind of alone figuring it out? Um, it's actually really difficult to become the first person from a country because you got no information. And yeah, so 
uh, I went to England uh, very early <laughs> this uh, this May. Uh, just want to join the swimming community to learn from people, you know, to get some more uh, some more informations, and then yeah, then and then I got my cross. <laughs> We, we put on the um, open waterpedia on a page for mentors uh, maybe mm -hmm. 30 or 40 mentors around the world who volunteer for free to talk to people uh, so I'll, after, at a certain point I'll, I'll ask if we can add you to that mm -hmm. list but for anybody out there who's kind of feeling a bit lost and lonely in this sport go to the mentor yeah. page you can find somebody that actually cares about you that will actually help you and give you some advice yeah yeah that that, that was uh, one of the the most difficult things for me because I got no one to help me. And then uh, I think one of the reason in, in Taiwan or in Asian country, because uh, uh, because of the language, because most of people don't speak uh, good English, so they feel lost. They don't know how to find information or people who can help. Okay. And tell us about the, the planning and logistics of uh, the Triple Crown in one summer. It's um difficult enough to, to to plan one of these swims but trying to plan them all in a summer how did you go about that Do you have a retired general helping you plan the assault i mean this is uh this is tough things uh, yeah um uh, i was in england uh, uh in end of may right so uh actually my english channel was uh, my 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 window was uh, next year 2025 not this year but mm. yeah when i've done my 6 hours back to back uh, in a week, um, my coach told me, "Oh, you're ready. So, uh, if you if if there's cancellation, would you like to give it a try? You're here. You're ready. So why not do it?" And then, okay, I think about it for about a week after I've done my Windermere, uh, yeah, one way swim, and then I I say, "Okay, yes, let's give it a try." <laughs> so okay. I got the my English channel uh this year, and then. Uh, after my English channel, I went to California. Um, yeah, I booked the Catalina last year, and then after my Catalina, I was I was in the waiting list of Manhattan, and then they told me, oh, "Okay, you 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 got the chance you can swim in uh, uh, October." So that's why so everything's in one day. The original plan was Catalina, and then Manhattan, and then a year later, the English Channel. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. It's a it's a sensible plan. Uh, the English Channel is um, almost always the more difficult of the three, uh, for, yes. for many reasons. One of the reasons is this this waiting for a window. Uh, Catalina almost always happens on the day booked, and Manhattan yeah. <laughs> is very good success rate on on the day booked. Whereas the English Channel, you can wait around for two yeah, weeks yeah. and and, and not to, and yeah, not get a slot. <laughs> Are you dragging along some some new marathon swimmers from Taiwan? Are you inspiring people? Are there ten year old children that come up to you and say, "I want to swim the English Channel. How do I do it?" Are you the role model? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I inspired a lots of people uh, in Taiwan, not just doing marathon swimming, like uh, because it ta Taiwanese people are afraid of open water swimming, so they just want to start it, start to to learn how to swim in open water. I think that's a big step for them. Yeah, and then yeah, they are a few. There are a few uh, swimmers asking me about how to get across the English Channel. So I think there will be. <laughs> and what's the fear of um, the open they, water? Of the open, oh, okay, because uh, most of the pool are so shallow, so you can stand up, and yeah, so people can swim in, in the pool but not in the sea. I think so it's, it's a it's, mental it's, thing, <laughs> it's, it's, it's depth, it's not sharks, it's depth, no, depth, no depth. sharks, <laughs> yeah, okay. just a mental thing. So that's how I coach them to swim in the open water, okay. And what has the reaction been to uh, to you in the swimming community? Are you uh, are you on television? Are there magazine articles? Um, are the pool people encouraging others to do it, or is it is it very low key? Oh yeah, yeah. There are a lot of uh, TVs, uh, news reports, and yeah, a lot of people are asking me uh, how to learn to get to the to to get uh, to 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 swim in the open water. I really inspired a lot of people in Taiwan. Okay, and tell us about your future plans. Um, my future plan is uh, I want to encourage more people to swim in the open water in Taiwan, and I want to do some 
uh, maybe like organization uh, in Taiwan. And uh, my, uh, my own plan is uh, North Channel next year. <laughs> so okay. it's going to be a huge challenge for me. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time today. Congratulations on your successes and all the best on, on the future. Uh, we have uh, another 120 videos if you enjoyed this one. Um, in a second, we'll put up the contact list. So subscribe to the channel and thank you very much. Thank you.